All right, well, who remembers our super cute little scarecrow from, I think it was last year or the year before. Very popular creation. And uh, well, we're following that up with, and this is just the prototype here. These are not the final colors. But as you can see here, our little scarecrow is getting a little witch friend. And that is what we're gonna put together today. I was telling Ron, if we get a lion and a Tin Man, we'll have the whole um, Oz clan here. So anyway, let's just jump right in to the assembly. We're actually going to begin by putting together the hat. So let me grab the pieces necessary for that. Move this out of the way. Okay, so here is, well, that's the main part of the hat. And what we can do is actually just get some some sections glued on here. I'm going to start off with this scallop section and as you can see here it actually uh, will fit in like so right over the tabs here and when we eventually get this glued in place I'm going to have you push these tabs out just to make sure that we do have it properly centered. These will kind of help with the centering process but for now I'm going to pop these in so it's easier to access this piece here. But that said, go ahead and grab your glue and let's begin by getting this glued down to our, I think this is AC geyser or AC pool. I think it's a geyser. And try to keep those glue lines thin so we don't warp this. Uh, actually, most of it will be covered up by this uh, purple. I'm sorry, a black glitter piece here in a second, but I'm gonna try to get that glue out to the little scalloped areas as well. And I'm gonna bring this, bring these up a little bit and that will help with the initial placement. Make sure you got them all in as far as the tabs go. Go ahead and drop that down. And again, just take these tabs, push them out. That'll help center it. And then just work your hand around the perimeter get that to stick and simple as that and I can bring these back in and you'll notice that it did a pretty good job of getting that nice and centered so next we're going to take this layer and we want to make sure that we kind of line this up so that these scallops match up with the other scallops here just like that okay let me move this out of the way before I mess it up so let's peel this back off and just remember that it's going to go down this way Let's get our glue on this. Now, this is like a glitter paper, so the back side of this is almost almost has like a plastic a plastic texture. That's going to buy me some time as far as the glue not setting as quickly, so I don't need to rush as much. Now, you may be using either a pattern paper or maybe some cardstock, and you are going to probably have to work a little bit quicker on this one. Okay. And there we go. And we'll make sure that I'm holding it right. I'm not. And is it this way? Nope. And all that prep work for nothing. There we go. And that's just going to line up exactly with the interior part of the purple piece. So that's a good thing to look at visually to make sure you've got it in the right spot. Give that a press down like that. Okay, and the hat is coming together nice and flat. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this whole thing <clears throat> and I'm going to put it underneath my little work mat here just to flatten it out and keep it nice and flat. Okay, next up is this part of our hat. Okay, let me double check something here real quick. Yep, okay. So this is pretty simple. You want to make sure that you fold everything at the score marks, obviously. And we're going to take and glue this together like so. So let's do that. And throw a little line right up along the edge there. And spread that glue out to the very, very edge. Okay. And you can actually do this flat. Just put this down flat and grab the other side 
and just press that down right onto the very edge of that tab so that this, this uh, side of the other piece is pretty much butting up against the score marks there. And then what I did was I kind of flipped it and folded it right at that seam and pressed down right on that seam there. There we go, okay, and there is our witch's hat. Now, I'll show you here on the prototype. Again, this is the prototype, so don't worry too much about it. Um, we're gonna put a little styrofoam ball, which I painted with some, here, I'll show you what I did here. <clears throat> Took some turquoise paint and I painted it with the turquoise and then I sprinkled some um, glitter on it. Okay, so that's eventually going to get glued right on the top. And now you'll also notice that with the prototype, um, we have some pipe cleaners poking out of here. And we're gonna do, a, there's only four here, we'll do a total of five, okay? And that's optional, so I'm not gonna go through that, but if you are gonna put pipe cleaners in here, um, put them in before you put the ball down, obviously, so that you don't have pipe cleaners sticking out. You can kind of hide them nicely <clears throat> with the ball on top. But before we get to that point, uh, we do need to, at this point, connect these, okay? So that's gonna go right on top like this, and we're gonna use those tabs that are connected to our blue color to get it all together. And we're actually gonna start with just one of the tabs. I'm gonna move these out of the way so I don't get any glue on them. And I'm gonna put glue on this tab. I don't need to worry about getting it out to the edge or anything like that. And just pick a side, it doesn't matter which side. And get that glued in place, make sure it's nice and centered. And I'll show you from this side here see that tab being glued to the inside of this section. If you want to, you can actually flip it over flat right here like so, just to press down and get that to take a little bit quicker, and that should work just fine. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and put glue on the side opposite of the side that's already anchored. That's gonna help us ensure that we get this nice and centered Okay, so you can see the glue there. We're gonna grab this, pop it all the way down, make sure it's nice and flush, and then just press. You'll see the tab is on the inside of that piece, and now I'm just pressing with my fingers, just kind of squishing it in place. Okay, so those two sides are in place. That makes me feel good, knowing that it's gonna be nice and centered. And you can see how once we get everything glued, it will, in fact, sit nice and centered. So. Let's flip this up, and now this one's glued down and this one's glued down, so let's go up here. Let's kind of work our way in a cross-like fashion and throw a little bit of glue on that. Flip that down, and this is the section here that we're gluing right now, so make sure that's nice and centered, nice and flush with the brim of the hat, and then press and hold that while it sets. Okay, so there we have it. There's that tab. Now we're gonna go opposite of that tab. And we're gonna do glue on this one. Okay. And flip that in. Grab that piece, make sure it's nice and flush with the, bot, with the actual brim itself. And then press that down into place. I'm using both my fingers here to apply pressure on that point. Two sets of fingers, I should say. All right, so we got one, two, three, four. Now, it doesn't matter which one. Let's go here. Get that glued down. And this thing is pretty much all in place now. So we're gonna flip that down. This is the side here. Grab it and just give it a press. And there it goes. And then we're gonna go opposite of the one we were just at, the one we just glued down, and throw some glue on that. Flip it in and push up against the inside of the tall part of the hat. Okay, that just leaves two more. We'll get those done. And flip that up. Press, hold, and there we go. And the last one. And flip that up and push. And there we go. Okay, next up is our little band. That looks great. 
this band is going to go on next and it's just going to kind of hug this and it should meet up perfectly on the other side. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to start somewhere in the middle. So pick one of these middle pieces here. I'm going to start here. Probably just do two of them like so. And then just pick pick two sections to apply that to. And when you put this down, make sure that this is in fact nice and flush, like kind of push down as you're pushing up against the purple part here, just because we want this to be completely flush with the brim. Otherwise, if you go up a little bit too much, it's gonna, it's gonna feel like maybe this thing is too large, but you just need to make sure that it's nice and flush and as down low as you can go. Okay, so now you can flip this over and we can apply glue to say, well, let's just go with the next two here. And grab that. Continue to kind of push down as you push up against the purple part to make sure that it is in fact flush with the brim. There we go. Perfect. And then you see the reason why we didn't glue this last one here is because this one has to go down first. You can see how there's kind of a small tab here. That's just so that there's not a gap. So if you close it up, if you're off by just a tad, there'll still be a little bit of that pattern or color still sitting there. And it won't look like you goofed up if it is off a little bit. So with this, I'm just gonna go the next three sections. And again, I'm just kind of pushing down as I push up against the purple all the way around. There we go. That's looking good. Looking like everything's fitting nicely. There we go. And then we'll move this out of the way. This one I did not put glue on. So I'm gonna flip it back and just apply a little bit of glue on this guy. And then fold it over and press. And then we can close it off with this last piece here. And just make sure you get a little bit of glue right up to the very edge of this last piece there so that it doesn't come pulling off and then close it up. There we go. Okay. So far so good. I didn't have a good crease there. That's fine. And we need to put these panels on first. Sorry. Okay. So we have these little triangular panels. Now I couldn't put them on beforehand because what we're going to do is we're going to glue these on and use the top of this band as our guide for placement. Okay, so that's gonna ensure that everything is nice and uh, uniform and consistent. So go ahead and throw some glue on the back of this guy here. And of course we wanna center it while also making sure that it's butting up against that pattern piece there. So you should have a nice even border on the left and right sides, just like that. And just press that all the way up and it's pretty, pretty close, good enough. Okay, so we're gonna repeat that all the way around with the remaining ones here. So if you want, you can go ahead and pause, do this on your own time and then catch up with me. I think the next thing we're gonna do is put the little belt buckle on. But in the meantime, I was actually, I was on the website the other day we did a search for a witch, and we got a lot of fun witchy stuff on the website, but I think this is gonna be, especially considering how popular our Scarecrow was, this will kinda of go along with the collection. Yeah, it's gonna be really cool. Okay, so actually now that we have these two in place, we can technically glue this on now. So go ahead and put your glue on here. I know I'm kind of jumping around. I said I was going to do this last, but I just can't help myself. So for those of you that it stopped because you saw me pick this up, <laughs> sorry, I just kind of, I'm going off. Uh, I am just all over the place here, but hey, making good progress and everything is coming out perfect right now. So now this is a gold foil, sometimes gold foil is fun to glue, meaning that it takes a little extra work because it's not as porous and it's got that sort of plastic backing on it. 
but there's our band, so that's good. And now we can just continue with the remaining little triangular panels. Let's get those in place. And once we're done with that, we're gonna move on to, yeah, we're gonna move on to the base of our witch. So when you see me pull these out, you know that we are on the next step. But either way, go ahead and continue putting these little triangular, long triangular panels in place. And then we'll get into the next component of our lovely witch. I'm gonna call her Winnie. Winnie, Winnie Witch Treat Box. So yes, this not only is a wonderful treat box, but uh, adults and kids alike, I'm sure will appreciate it as a piece of decor uh, once they eat all the goodies or see their little gift inside. I know when I was a kid, uh, I don't know if I've ever told this story, probably have, maybe not, but uh, as a Polish immigrant, didn't really know what Halloween was until, oh, kindergarten, I think and really wanted to go trick-or-treating, but my parents didn't even know what it was really. And I didn't get to go. So of course, you know how human nature is. Uh, the more you can't have something, the more you want it. And I just became obsessed with it. And as I got older, I really enjoyed when retail started carrying little decorations. And I just thought even the coolest little uh, tchotchkes and doodads were awesome as far as home decor. I know when I would save up enough money to buy myself something small, I'd just get really excited and I'd cut out little bats and decorate my room for Halloween and play spooky music. Um, I was a weird kid, but I remember for some odd reason, I really associate Halloween with um, with two of Michael Jackson's records. One is Off the Wall, and the title track on that actually has kind of a spooky vibe to it. Uh, so I was jamming that as a kid, and then of course, for whatever reason, and I see that even with uh, our kids today, my girlfriend's kids, when I introduced them to Michael Jackson's Thriller, they were in awe, despite the fact that, you know, it's now, geez, uh, 35 years old. They still think it's cool and kind of passing that on to them. So anyway, that's, uh, that's that. So as I was saying, I think a child would absolutely love, especially one that is really getting into Halloween, would love to have this as a little piece of decor or even an adult like me. <laughs> okay, so I guess, as I mentioned, it is optional, uh, but I'm gonna show you because your cutouts came with these little moons and stars. I'm gonna show you how that works here should you decide to go that route. But again, this little styrofoam ball is gonna go right on top. I'm getting my, my hot glue gun warmed up here so that we can finish that off in just a second. But before we do, um, I've got some pipe cleaners here. So you're going to want to get, well, actually, I could probably cut pipe cleaners with some scissors. I don't want you to ruin them. So you want some uh, wire cutters would be ideal. And we're going to cut the wires to about, let me see here, uh, let's say about five inches. Okay, so we need about five inches of wire for each little guy. One, two, three, four, five. So we're gonna snip it right here. Right about there. Okay. And do the same thing here. So now that we have one, we know how long the other one should be. And we're gonna just take these, hot glue them to the inside. And actually we're gonna do three silver because I don't have enough gold. That's fine. There we go. Okay, so I cut those to about five inches. Okay, so let's start with the stars here. And I think the best thing to do, I was gonna use hot glue, but sometimes hot glue gets really bulky and it will make it look as if 
it's not completely flat. It'll just kind of make it look weird. So we're gonna try to do this with just regular glue. Take your little pipe cleaner here and put it right in the center between two of the little sections of our star and just press that down. Try to get that as flat as you can and push down on the little points of the star. Keep holding until everything sets. Now I'm using a glitter paper here. So of course it's not as, uh, well, what's the word I'm looking for? Porous, it's kind of like I'm gluing two pieces of plastic together and that sometimes can be a little difficult or not difficult, just takes a lot more time for things to set. Okay, but that is ultimately what we're looking for is a look like that. Okay, and if you push down on just one side, it may sort of crease a little bit, but it'll be flat on the other side. So that'll be the side that will show off. Okay, so let's do that one more time here. We'll grab the larger star this time. Okay. And again, let's get, let's get this nice and coated with glue and try to get that glue out to the very tips of each of the little points of the star. Okay, then grab your pipe cleaner and pop it right in the center between the two points. Okay, and then grab your other star and do your best to get that nice and lined up. And then just push down right on the points of the star. Make sure you got it lined up. Okay, and just press, you can use all your fingers that you have there to push down on those little points just to kind of sandwich it and keep it from moving around too much. Now again, I'm using glitter paper here, so I gotta give it a few extra seconds to make sure that it sets before I move on, but there you have it. That was a little sideways, but it's not a problem because we can always just bend the pipe cleaner a little bit. Okay, so we'll do that one more time and then we'll have to do the moon. <clears throat> okay, so again, coat this really good, really well. Coat it really good. I think that's right. And pop that right in the center. And push it down a little bit so that the glue kind of grabs a little bit of it. And then again, just focus on the points. And there we go. And just press and hold those in place. Okay, the moon's gonna be a little bit different. Okay, so as far as the moon goes, I think the best plan would be to, similar to the star, just get your glue on the entire moon, make sure you get it out to the tips. And we're gonna take our pipe cleaner and just lay it right on top of the very, one of the little tips of the, the moon there. Okay, and actually, you know, it might help to kind of trim some of this off just so that, because it's a really thin little area. We don't want this stuff poking out. So pop it right in there like so. Then take your other moon Lay it right on top, make sure you line it up, and then just give that a press. And then hold that in place until it sets. Okay. And that's essentially what it should look like, just like that. Okay, again, this is completely optional, uh, but it really, you know, the little details are really kind of set this thing off. Okay, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna get these guys all in place, and if it helps, <clears throat> well, you can certainly tape them, uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a generous amount of hot glue on the very tip of the little pipe cleaner. And again, I'm gonna put these towards the back of the hat and just get them right up against the inside. You can put them in maybe, that's probably about a quarter inch maybe, half an inch, so that you have at least have some of it in there. And just press it up against the inside of the hat. 
Okay. And it's okay if it's sticking out like that for now. We can always train this later on to get it to really stay where we want it. And I'm just gonna kind of drizzle a little bit more hot glue inside there so it doesn't go anywhere. That's fine. And maybe just kind of paint that over it a little bit. It's okay if we make a mess inside there. No one's gonna see it. And here I am having fun with my hot glue. Okay, all right, so just moving along here. And again, I'm gonna take this and just fold, fold about, that's about a quarter inch, yeah, about a quarter inch of that over. And we'll get our hot glue right on the bottom of that. Maybe do both sides so we, depending on how we pop it in there, make sure that it grabs. Okay, and again, we can twist and do whatever the heck we need to this thing eventually. And if necessary, grab a dowel to help you push that up against the inside there. And there's my favorite part about hot glue, is those little, little frilly, annoying things. Usually hot glue will dry a lot quicker than I'm having an experience with right now, but that's okay. All right, so you get the idea. I'm not very graceful when I work with hot glue. And that just goes to show that I don't do it that often. So you wanna get good at something, you gotta do it over and over and over again to learn your tool. And I'm just gonna drop some more hot glue in there just on top of it. On top of that new sil that second silver one I just put in there so that it doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, and that's pretty. That's good. It didn't go nowhere. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm doing right now. I feel like I'm making candy or something. Okay. Thanks a lot, hot glue. Okay. And grab the next one here. You get the idea. Um, so get it in there however you see fit. You guys are probably better than I am with hot glue. So use your skills, get it in there. And then we're gonna take our little styrofoam ball and close it up so that everything is nice and hidden. Well, that, was, that was a little more graceful. Good job, Leo. And pop that in, push it up against the inside. And again, if you need a little tool or something to help you push that, you can even kind of move that hot glue around and get it into the little nooks and crannies there. And then deal with that. I don't even know what that is. There we go. Let that set before you start to try to jiggle it around too much. And I'm just kind of alternating the colors here just so that um, it looks a little more, well, just aesthetically pleasing. Okay, so we have our pipe cleaners in place. Now, I waited until it was nice and dry, and I took it and I kind of folded them back so that we can put the ball right on top and kind of hide all that stuff there. So I'm gonna do a nice, generous amount of glue, and I'm actually, it's in between sticks here, so it's kind of, you gotta get a little bit around the very tip of that and throw some extra on the actual pipe cleaners. Hopefully that's enough. Okay, and just gonna kind of squish that into place and give it a good press so that it's nice and flush with everything, especially the little pipe cleaners. And that looks really good actually. Okay, so our our little top or finial is in place. Gonna let that set. Uh, I think we're pretty much done with the hat for now. Put it off to the side and we'll train the, uh, what's it called? The little uh, pipe cleaners once the rest of this is put together. In the meantime, we're gonna do a little bit of paper piecing and get some simple stuff together. Now you're gonna find these pieces here and they are numbered, so it may be helpful to just kind of put them in order. There's a one there, a two, and a three, and then this is four, okay? So one is gonna have two of these sections off to the left, 
four is going to have uh, two of these sections off to the right. There's no four on this. We just assume it's number four because it doesn't have a tab. Okay. And um, I kind of did a little bit of pre-prep here. Each of these top sections is going to have one of these. Okay. And you can see that I already put these two down. I'm going to do two of them with you. So while this thing is nice and flat, go ahead and get your glue onto the panel. And we'll get that into place. And you want to get this nice and centered so that you have an even border going all the way around. Okay, there's no little markers or anything on this, so you just have to eyeball it, which is fine. It's pretty straightforward. And you, if, even if you're off a smidge, no one's going to notice. Okay, and then you've got this guy here. You got to put him on piece number one. You can see that one's missing one. And then the bottom sections also have some panels. And as you can see, I have put some of those in place just to save time because the process is pretty repetitive and self-explanatory. I don't like to spend a lot of time on that if I don't have to. Okay, there we go. All right, now the reason that the other side, the larger side here, is actually gonna have panels as well. But I did not put those on first because we have to actually glue these tabs on before we put these on, otherwise they will just disappear. So we can, at this point, get the smaller ones in place for the bottom section of this element. So let's do that. And as you can see, I already have a handful of them on there. I've got one, two, three, four of this shape already in place. Okay, so again, just do your best to center that and make sure that you've got a nice even border going all the way around. Okay, and then we'll put this one in place here. And then you can see that the little end piece, this is the collar on her little cape. Okay, I'm going to put this right in place here, like that. I'm going to nudge it up a little bit. There we go. Perfect. And then finally, on this side, it's this little piece. On the left side, it's a very similar looking piece, except it's kind of mirrored, and it's going the opposite way. Just want to get that right in place here, and again, making sure that we have a nice even border going all the way around. You can see that my fingers are turning black here, and that's because I took a little bit of ink and I hit the sides of these black panels because it's a white core and a white back, and I didn't want any white showing up on the sides. So now we've got that all in place. You can take these sections here and we're gonna glue these together. Okay, they're gonna come out like this actually. So this is kind of the collar around her neck, and this is gonna go behind her head. So let's get that in place. And I might even have I might even have some ink on my face at this point, but I'm sure I'm not the first person to get stuff all over me while I'm crafting. Okay, so this one had the Roman numeral one on it. We're gonna connect that to this section with the Roman numeral two. Okay, just make sure you get that nice and lined up. This is already starting to dry. This glue is so unpredictable sometimes, but I got it right in the right spot, so that's good. And then we just need to bend this one back and get our glue on this guy here. This is the lower tab on section one. There we go. And we will just tuck that behind its neighbor and just make sure that you get that nice and lined up at the correct angle. And there we have it. Okay. And this is just going to kind of hang free. You'll see what we're, we're going to do with that later. So again, this is Roman numeral two. We're going to grab piece number three and we're going to glue that to piece number two, just like we did the first section, except this one's a little shorter. It doesn't have that little, a little two sections uh, coming off of it. We'll bend this back so it's easier to work with. Get that nice and aligned. And there we 
go. Beautiful. Okay, and just like we did the first time, get some glue on the smaller tab. And paint that out. Okay, we'll line it up. And there we go. And the last section here, same thing. Put our glue on tab number three. And my glue nozzle is all gross. There we have it. Okay, so this is piece number four, even though it's not numbered. We know it's piece number four because it's not numbered. And we're gonna connect that to piece number three. Whoops. The glue's still kind of slippery, not as tacky this time. Just got to pay attention to what the glue is telling you. There we go. Okay. And move that out of the way. Put our glue on the final tab. Like that. Spread that out all the way to the little edges there. And bring that down connected to that tab, there we have it. Okay, so that is the little collar that's gonna go around her head. And you can see here, I put this panel in place already because there were no tabs to worry about. Now that these two sections are connected and the tabs in place there, we can go ahead and put the rest of these panels in place to cover up those tabs. If we were to put this in place first, the tab would go over this section and we don't want that. We want, we want to highlight pretty things and not structural things. This isn't a uh, uh, industrial witch. We're trying to make her nice and aesthetically pleasing. <clears throat> okay, so get that nice and centered, nice even border on all four sides. Give it a little nudge wherever it needs to go so it finds its little home. And there we have it, just two more to go. And our little collar section will be done. Okay. I'm gonna do this one here. And then we'll do that last one there. That looks great. Okay, well, we have a prototype, and the prototype looks cool. It's not exactly aesthetically pleasing because we're just using scrap paper or, you know, whites and blacks, which are less expensive as far as prototyping. So it gives us an idea of what things are going to look like. This is the first time actually any of us are going to see what this looks like with these colors. Okay, and that is not exactly centered. See if I can give that a nudge. And it moved a little bit, and that's fine. Okay, there we have it. Collar is all done. That's gonna look really cool. Okay, I'll put that off to the side. Another element done. Let's put some eyeballs together. Now I do have some eyebrows. We don't need to do anything with that. Just put that off to the side for now. And we do have two eyeballs. Okay, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and glue this black section to the white section, right on top of that little shadow layer. So flip this around, let me clean this off here. It's getting gunky. And you can be somewhat generous here, but then when you're working around the perimeter, just kind of push some glue out on that nozzle and then just rub it across the paper instead of trying to, you know, shoot a bunch of glue out onto it. Just get it right on the tip of that nozzle and then work it from there. Okay, and get that nice and centered and nice and on top of the little white area, the, the shadow layer as I'll call it. There we go. I think that worked. This part is kind of flopping around, so 
I did put glue in that area, but obviously sometimes you don't get enough. So I'll grab a scrap piece of paper and just kind of tuck it in between these two layers, paint a little extra glue on it, and press that down into place so that it sits nice and nice and flat. Okay, so there's one eyeball. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Let's see if this time I can actually get it all to stick. I might need to use just a little more glue. That or I was too slow. Could be a combination of both. And pop that right on there. I'm using this little corner section as kind of an initial guide. And then kind of looking around the entire piece here, making sure that everything's lining up. And that looks pretty good. If I need to, I can kind of crush that white down a little bit, flatten it out. Here we go. Okay. And then she's got some nice little turquoise eyeballs. So throw a little bit of glue on this turquoise. In my case, turquoise. So you might have picked some different colors for her eyes, and that's fine. And then there are little guides on the black section of the eyes to help you with the placement of that, just to make life easier so that you can still get that desired outcome without any guesswork. Keeps it more fun. Okay, so use those guides, drop it in there, and there you go. Eyeballs are ready to go. Okay, they're gonna be kinda of like that more. I'm gonna put those off to the side since we're done with that. And next thing we're gonna work on is the base. Oh, by the way, we do have her mouth here. Um, well, you know what, actually, there is something we can do with that right now. Uh, you may think that this is a scrap, but it's not. There is, in fact, a little white piece, okay, and that is her tooth. We need, do need to glue that down, so it's something that we can just kind of get out of the way. Just throw maybe one tiny little dot of glue on there, and the side that's kind of more butt-shaped is the side that points down. It's like her tooth. Well, it is her tooth, but it should look like that. Okay, so put that off to the side. Now, we're gonna put together our little base. Okay, pretty simple. And what we're gonna do first is take these two long pieces that are, have not yet been assembled, and we're going to connect them using this little triangular tab right here. Okay. Just like that. And I'll grab this next section here, line it up nice and square. Okay, press down. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and flip it on top of itself at that seam where we've connected it. I want to make sure that these two sections sit on top of each other accurately so that these tabs are literally flush. All these edges here are nice and flush all the way down to the bottom. And that, that is going to be a good starting point for making sure that uh, well, this thing goes together properly. Okay, so that is where we connected it. You may want to kind of go easy on that section for now and try not to tug on it too much. So I'm going to start over here on this side, and we're going to start with our first tab here and apply our glue onto that tab. And I'm going to spread that glue out and just connect it with its neighboring piece. And you can see that I did a little bit of pre-inking as well on this section. This section mostly will not be visible since it'll be hidden by the collar. <clears throat> There's going to be one little area where it does show just maybe this much. So it doesn't have to be really pretty. You don't have to worry too much about being overly perfect with this assembly, but because if you do make a little mistake, no one's really going to see it. It'll be covered up, but I kind of hold myself to a high standard, so for the most part, I'll treat every tab equally. Okay. And just get that connected. Again, keep, um, keep in mind the amount of glue that you're using and try to minimize it. Don't overdo it with the glue, otherwise you'll be sitting here for two minutes waiting for each tab to dry and that 
is not fun. So put a little glue on there, spread it out, give it a little dab to thin it out and get it nice and tacky. And that will help you really move through this efficiently. There we go. Okay. And you can see literally just a few little squeezes. Just have to press on it a couple times and it's done. It's ready to go. I mean, if you tug on it, it'll still probably come apart. It may just rip, I don't know. Uh, I try not to sabotage my work when possible. So I couldn't really tell you, but uh, it will obviously come off a lot easier than it would if the tab had dried for 30 minutes. And that goes without saying. Okay, last one here. <clears throat> and then I need to, I'm gonna connect these two sections using this little triangular tab. Right there, square it up. Oops. Yeah, I guess we could have done the top section first. It doesn't really matter. Sometimes, uh, well, most times, you can do something more than one way. And really the only difference is, well, does doing it one way make it easier or does it make it harder? And you know, I think you can, you can quantify that. And I guess you can debate it, but ultimately, once you do this in, in, enough times, there's really nothing that you can't accomplish and regardless of which route you take to get to that end result. Okay, we are not going to close this up yet because we actually have to attach the head to this once we get to that point. Okay, now one thing we can do, however, is we can take this piece and this is just uh, the part that goes underneath the center of her face, almost looks like maybe she's wearing a, you know, an orange polka dot um, shirt. <laughs> Sorry, I'm thinking about like 20 things at once. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're just going to glue this down onto whichever side we want, it doesn't really matter. As long as when we put the head in place, the center of her face lines up with this section here. So go ahead and put that down. Okay, so just make sure that you've got this all nice and aligned on the front here in these front two pieces or sections. And you can put this off to the side for now. And we're gonna begin on the main part here, our witch's face. And you can see here that we do have a numbering system here. There's a one, there's a two. There's a three, the four is, and I'll show you here. Um, I can actually write on this because it's gonna be covered up, but a four is four lines in the shape of a square, okay? Or a circle, whatever you wanna call it. It's basically a square. And then the five is that same little square, but with a Roman numeral one after it, okay? And then a six, obviously is the same square with a Roman numeral two and so on and so forth. Okay, you wanna make sure that you get these all in order. Um, really the most important thing is to get one and two in the correct order because we have little slits here for where the nose is gonna go. Okay, now one thing that I do recommend is that you get all this stuff nice and pre-folded before you start. I guess that's one thing that I didn't do this time around, I usually Try to do that. It helps to get all this stuff pre-folded before we actually start gluing everything together just because it makes everything so much easier as far as getting the shape defined goes. Okay, so I'm just gonna get these two going so that we can get started here. And where's my number two? There's number two. I accidentally grabbed piece three. Okay, so get everything folded and then we can start putting this together. Now this is um, for those of you that made our scarecrow and many other egg-shaped or round 
shapes. This is going to be very familiar to you because essentially we're just gluing tabs together. So I'm going to start at the top since it's the longest tab. It will give us more to look at to ensure that we've got the alignment correct. Okay, so and also it helps to look at right at the top here where these two sections are so that we know that they are in fact lined up correctly. If you're off by a smidge, it's not the end of the world. We do have panels that are going to go on this and essentially that will cover it up and also when we put the hat on that will cover it up too so you do have a little margin of uh, room for error here but obviously you want to put your best foot forward and do the best you can okay so here i'm just getting these lined up taking this side here and this side here lining it up right at where the little score mark is and then just moving right along now this little score or this little tab here is a little different we had to make it this way so that the nose will fit through the slits, but essentially it's the same concept, same idea. And you just want to line those up as accurately as you can. Give that a press, and there we go. Fold that back and apply your glue to the next tab. And I like to just kind of dab it out to the corners or the edges. Thin out the glue a little bit, make it tacky so that when we press, you just have to give it a couple presses and it's pretty much ready to go. You can move on to the next one. So there's going to be quite a few tabs here to do. So save yourself some time and work efficiently. Try not to use too much glue. It'll save you a lot of time because this is going to be Probably the most tedious, not hard though. Nothing, none of this is really hard. And this is really where, when I'm doing my projects for fun on my own, this is where I will typically really zone out <clears throat> and get into a podcast or something. And you're probably just gonna listen to me blab. So we'll try to come up with something interesting to talk about here. <laughs> Because again, this is going to be very, very repetitive for a little while. So we've got a Roman numeral one, Roman numeral two. Let's find our piece number three. It's the Roman numeral three. And we're going to get that in place. So we'll start again at the top. And we're just repeating the same process that we just went through with this next section until all the sections are together to create the main structure of our witch's head. Okay, and just do your best to get that lined up. So again, I'm gonna talk about what I'm doing here, but uh, just thinking about uh, Halloween this year, and uh, I had an idea. Okay, going on to the next tab here. So my girlfriend's been living with me for three years and her kids have been living with me as well. So I'm taking on the role of dad and it's been fun, rewarding, sometimes frustrating. I guess that's pretty typical, but I was thinking about Halloween for the kids because I know that was my favorite holiday growing up, one of them anyway. And it's gonna, they're seven and eight. And you don't get very many Halloweens. Luckily, we're out in the country, our town's population. And real quick side note here, to make it easier to access these tabs, just fold this out of the way. That way you're not fighting that piece that you're holding. And it's not getting in the way. And again, I'm just going down one tab at a time here, applying my glue getting everything lined up. One thing I will say here, what you could possibly do, if you want, if you're, if you're courageous, you could absolutely do more than one tab at a time. Okay, and that might actually speed things up. Um, this is going on the website for us. I don't like to rush things. I could probably still do it at the same level if I do more than one tab at a time, but I don't, 
don't want to risk it because sometimes the glue dries really fast. But as you can see, you could totally pull it off. I feel like I am giving each little section less attention if I'm doing three at a time, but I mean, technically it does work. Okay. So feel free to do more than one at a time. Aside from this top one, I would do this top one, one at a time until you get to the rest of these tabs. Okay. So we do need to fold these, get them ready to go. Okay. And again, we'll start, this is piece number four. Make sure you're putting it next to piece number three. We'll start with the top. Grab your glue, get it right on there, like so. There we go. And get that lined up. Make sure that the top of this is lined up with the top of the previous piece, number three, and that this section here is buttoned up against those tabs as accurately as you can get them, like so. That's pretty good. And then again, back to these sections here. And I'm just going to go one tab at a time here. But anyway, as I was saying, um, <clears throat> we live in an area where the population is about a thousand people and uh, it's pretty easy going out here. Our, our Corona numbers are very low, actually uh, just a few cases, no deaths. Uh, schools are partially open. Kids are in school half a day. Anyway, I was thinking about doing was <clears throat> maybe making a, making an SVG or something, cutting it out, maybe a print and cut and taking it and dropping it in people's mailboxes with a glow stick and say, Hey, you know, if you are okay, if you're comfortable with kids going to the door, put your glow stick, crack it open and hang it from your mail mailbox on Halloween night so that when we're trick or treating with the kids, they know which houses to go to and which ones not to go to. Uh, there's probably a good 20 kids and we live on a really long dead end street and everyone pretty much knows everyone. So I think people would be pretty cool about it. Uh, it's a long block. It's probably, Oh, I'd say about a half a mile long. And I, I still think kids these days are kind of wusses a little bit. Um, cause I would trick or treat for four or five hours and they get tuckered out after, I don't know, you know, a few blocks. So <laughs> their loss, Hey, I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe I was just a crazy kid. I don't know. But anyway, I thought that was a cool idea, a way to salvage. Halloween for them this year. Okay. And there we go. All right. So we've got four sides put together <clears throat> and this is piece number four. So now we got to find number five. Number five is the, where the heck did it go? Four. Did I lose it? Oh, here it is. Okay. So it's the little square or circle with the four dashes and the two next to it or the one next to it. Sorry. I'm jumping ahead here, but there we go. Okay. And same thing here. We're going to start up at the top, get this first section anchored and then work on the next section of tabs here. But <clears throat> I know, uh, Corona's put a damper on a lot of things and I, feel like with the way things are right now, we're, we're you know, we're doing our, our jobs here and wearing our masks and such. Um, my girlfriend actually is a nurse, so she's on the front lines. Uh, she could probably get it any day, but I am actually convinced that we've already had it back in January because she had to go to, had to take her to the ER to get breathing treatments because she was sick and that's never happened to her before. And I know that I fell ill with something around January and uh, knocked me out for just a day. Um, so I don't know. I mean, 
think everyone's going to get it eventually. You know, the whole idea was to slow down the spread. I don't think you're ever going to get rid of it completely. But anyway, enough of that. I just thought that was a cool way to possibly, you know, salvage things. Because, I mean, we go out to eat and stuff. So and trick-or-treating is mostly outside. And out here, you know, you're not going to get 40 kids at one door. It just doesn't happen because we're, we're that remote where kids from other neighborhoods would not come out here. They had no way to unless they rode their bikes, but then they'd have to ride bikes on country roads. So, you know, we're kind of in a little bubble here, and our kids all play together, and the neighbors all hang out. and uh, So, I don't know. Anyway, hopefully uh, we're doing our best to keep things as normal as possible. Not the new normal, the old normal with some precautions. Okay, so last one for this section here. And there we go. Okay, so we got piece number five in place. So five of these are together. Let's find piece number six. It's the little four dashes in a square and the Roman numeral two. Let's get that folded and work that in. We're almost done here with the main structure and we gotta put some panels on. And she's got some hair too. She's got a lot of hair, actually. I think she must have dyed it purple. Or it could be her natural color. I wouldn't put it past her. Okay. And there we go. First one's in place. Just make sure it's nice and lined up at the top if you can. And move that out of the way. And I'm going to try to speed things up here a little bit. I'm going to see if I can do a few at a time here. Maybe just two at a time will speed things up for me. And we're starting to get towards the back here. This is going to be even less visible. And again, we're putting panels over this, so it's going to be even less visible. But again, I want to make sure that... Yeah, so you know, I mean, when I, when I start to do two at a time, I feel like it doesn't keep the right shape because I... I feel like it kind of um, jostles around and moves around a little bit while that first section is trying to set. So if you're going to do more than one tab at a time, proceed with caution. Know that you may not get an exact replica of what we're doing here. You know, your shape may be a tad off. Um, or maybe not. I've actually had one customer who... Um, did this with like um, tape glue or glue tape, like a tape gun. You know, the, I have some. <clears throat> I don't use it very often, so that's why. Where is it? This stuff. What do you call this? I don't know, whatever. It's just tape, really. And then they have, you know, they have thicker ones that you put in tape guns. And actually, I don't know if she was using a tape gun or if she was just using something like that. I actually tried that at one point. I, I did not like it. It does just not work out for me. I'm not, I can't be as accurate. And my seams are never as clean. So I kind of ditched that idea. Okay, piece number seven coming up next. Let's get this all folded. Okay. And here we go. Same thing. Moving right along here. Start with the first one. Let's get it anchored. And then we can move on to the next section. And now as we get closer to completing this shape, there is going to be a little bit of resistance because the paper is... It will, we're naturally going to be pushing it outward, but it's going to want to come, kind of come in on itself. And that can be, you can, it adds to the challenge. It's not hard, but it's something that you'll have to, a little obstacle, not a big one. Okay, there we go. Pull that back. 
open up the next tab here, get our glue on, and there we go. Moving right along here, so yeah, what are you guys doing for Halloween? Doing anything special? I'm just curious to know how many of you um, are actually going to see your grandkids and um, going out to eat or, or if everybody is still quarantining and you know, there's no right or wrong. It's whatever you feel comfortable with. But it's just, just curious. So if you have any input, feel free to leave a comment under this video on our YouTube channel. We'd like to get to know our dreamers a little bit better. There we go. Okay. And this is definitely the, this is the most challenging or time consuming project of, of the uh, new bundle, but not hard. Just a lot of little tabs, specific, specifically in this section here. This is where it gets a little tedious. Okay. All right. So we've got one more to go here and then we just need to close it up. So essentially we've got two more of these to do and then we can move on to the next next segments. Okay. There we go. All right, starting at the top. Let me get this in place. Like that. Get it nice and lined up. Just like we did the first seven times. and then continue on down the line here. Okay, so moving right along here to the next tab. Oops, that shot out. If that ever happens, just <clears throat> stop squeezing. Just use the nozzle to move the glue around and then just continue on. Okay. I'm gonna power through this here so that we can get to the next step. And that's putting the panels on. And many of you have done this with other you know, projects from our site, especially, well, let's think back here. Uh, we've got obviously the scarecrow, the turkey, um, the, the dog and cat from our little pet cookie jar bundle. So many different elements essentially have the same, uh, well, processes. So a lot of this stuff is, should be pretty familiar. Okay. And there we go. So, Next thing we're going to do is we got these, these panels that are going to go on and I did ink those. <clears throat> Actually, I think this is the geyser color and pool, I think is this color. That does look like a pool. And so we kept the structure, the same color as the panels. That way when you put them on, if there are any little gaps, um, it'll cover it up nicely. Okay. So we're going to close this up now, essentially doing the same thing. It's just that everything is kind of joined together already. And once we get this part in, we're gonna have to get a little, a little tricky with our glue. And there's a couple little techniques that you can use to get these in place. <clears throat> And right now, actually, I think we probably have enough 
Well, no, we actually don't. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab a scrap piece of paper and put my glue on that. And then lift this up and pop it onto the tab like that. Instead of trying to force my nozzle in there and then end up warping or destroying the paper, you can do it that way. Or once we get down to this side here, we could actually apply the glue from underneath. And you could technically, if you don't wanna use the painting method, I can show you here. You can see that little tab right there. Okay, I just need to pop it out. So you can see how it's kind of standing up. You can get your nozzle in there and apply the glue that way. But the only downfall is you can't get your finger in there. So I'm gonna use my scrap piece of paper to spread that out to the very edge, just like I have been with my fingers all along. You can't really get your finger in there. So this is the best, next best thing. Okay, so that worked nicely. That's another option. And I'm gonna go with my, my scrap piece of paper method. It's never failed me. It gives me almost as much control as my finger, but not quite, but good enough. And there we go. Just paint that glue right on that tab. And if you get a little bit that squirts out, it's okay. Everything's gonna be covered up eventually anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But sure makes it very accurate using this little painting method. And there we go. So literally just applying the glue with my scrap piece of paper onto that triangular tab and doing it that way so that we don't break anything. And it works. Just have to be resourceful when it comes to crafting. And there we go. Okay, that just leaves one more tab. And again, as I mentioned, now that we're at the bottom here, you can just fold that tab over and get your nozzle in that way. And then close it up. And there we go. Okay, so our structure is together. And next up, we're gonna start applying our panels. So fold these out, because eventually these are gonna go inside of the base and we're gonna use these tabs to connect it to our base. Okay, so there we have it. And this is our front, this is where our nose is gonna go. So let's grab these. Let me move this out of the way so we don't get glue on anything. Okay. All right, now obviously these are not numbered. They don't need to be. You have two that look like this. Obviously these are the two that are gonna go on the front here. Okay, so what we're gonna do first thing is we're gonna take and put glue on this top section here. The hat's gonna go over this section and then where all we need to do is put glue on the bottom section. We don't even need to put glue on anything else. Okay, and that's gonna create a nice round look on her face. So start with this tab here. Now it is gonna be important that you get the glue out to the very top and right up to the very edge of where this score mark is. We want that to sit completely flat. So get that nice and centered onto the section here. Use your fingers to ensure that it's nice and flush at the top and then kind of give that a little push right at that seam and check your work. Make sure that you've got it nice and centered on there. Looks like we do. So that is looking good. Give that a second to set up at the top. And then we're gonna flip this down and we're just gonna put glue on roughly this much of it. Okay, and make sure you get a little bit of extra glue at the bottom. Spread that glue all the way out to the very bottom and bring that down and hold it in place right there at the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna do the two parts of the front first, because I wanna make sure that those are <clears throat> as accurate as possible. Once we get towards the back, if we do make a mistake or things are a little bit more off, it's gonna be more forgiving because we're not gonna see as much of it. There's gonna be a lot of hair covering it up, plus the collar is gonna be covering it up. So we wanna focus on the face, the front of the face first. 
Okay, and you can see here, when we get this lined up, it should be pretty seamless there down the center. Okay, we're gonna do repeat the same process here. Get our glue on this little section. Okay, and make sure you work a little bit of glue out to both the top and the bottom. So those sit nice and flush. Okay, and get that as centered as possible onto that section, nice and flush at the top. That's gonna ensure that it wraps correctly as well. And then give that, that little seam there where the uh, score lines are a little push. So grab this piece and kind of push it down so it's making good contact all the way up to that seam. Then we can bring this down just like we did the first time and throw a little bit of glue on maybe the first third of an inch down there and spread that glue out to the very ends and just wrap that down and you might want to just kind of pull it taut. And there we go. And I would say that that is pretty darn good. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. And I'm just using this tab so that I'm not pushing directly onto this piece here. I don't want to crease it or dent it or anything like that. And this is kind of almost like a putting an extra layer between your finger and that piece. Okay, there we go, that looks great. All right, now the rest of these are gonna go on the same way, but luckily we don't need to worry about what goes where or, um, they're all the same and they're all gonna go on the same exact way until we get them all in place. So same thing here, make sure you get that glue out to the very top as well as right up to the score line, the little seam. Get that nice and centered. Use your finger to feel that this is nice and flush with the previous layer. And then give that a little push right there where that score mark is. There we go, looking good. Be patient there for a second. I noticed that on the last piece, it was kind of coming away when I was gluing this down. And there we have it. Okay, and you can see that pretty much matches up perfectly. And that's, that's what we're aiming for. It's never gonna be completely perfect because, well, a lot of variables involved, including the fact that we're human. And then there's always, uh, well, how well this goes together is gonna be completely dependent on how well you did when you assembled the main structure that's behind it. If that's off a little bit, uh, you may end up with a little bit of an imperfection and I wouldn't even call it that because I mean, we're taking flat pieces of paper and turning them into amazing little creations. So I think that regardless of what the outcome is, I bet it's gonna look pretty darn good, even if it's slightly off, okay? I'm sure that even master artists had a couple goop goof ups here and there, so don't beat yourself up. <clears throat> All right, so next piece, and I'm just kind of going back and forth instead of sticking to one side the entire time. I'm going, so I'm not going clockwise or counterclockwise. I'm just kind of going here and then there and then here and then there, just kind of flip flopping. Okay, just make sure that you get that nice and centered, nice and lined up. Kind of give that a press there at that seam. Okay, and then of course, we're just gonna pull that down just like we did the last few times. Get your glue on the bottom of that tab, or the panel, I should say. And spread that glue out to the very bottom. And bring it down. There we go. And just do your best to get that as centered as you can. And remember that we're gonna have some, uh, well, the collar is actually gonna cover up a lot of this too. So even if down here it doesn't look completely perfect, that's okay. We've got a lot of layers to this that are going to all work together to create that end result and some of them kind of help each other out. They bail each other out if things aren't going as planned. To an extent, of course. Okay, so I'm putting glue on the next panel. 
and I'm going to get that glue out to the edges and kind of dry over here. You can feel it on your finger uh, as far as the, um, the quantity of glue that's actually on there. When you start spreading it around with your fingers, if you know your finger kind of stops and it doesn't glide, obviously there's not a lot of adhesive in that spot and you may want to apply some more because if, if, if you don't feel your finger gliding, um, chances are there's nothing for the paper to really grab onto. Sometimes when it's really, really dry and tacky, <clears throat> it still will work, but it has a tendency to kind of fall off. So um, you can usually feel that consistency with your finger. And that's another reason why I like to use my finger because it really helps me feel how much glue is on there for me to use and get that piece of paper to stick. Okay, so just make sure that's nice and centered. Seems to be overlapping a little bit more than I wanted it to there, but actually it's fine. And again, remember, we're starting to get towards the back of the head here. So if things aren't lining up as well, it's gonna be okay, because we're gonna have hair and the collar hiding it. And it actually still looks great. <clears throat> so I'm just trying to be a cheerleader at this point. I'm going to root you guys on because it's going to look cool when it's all said and done. And that's all that matters. All right, same thing here, spreading that glue out to the very edges. Okay, and I forgot which side I was on, but it doesn't matter at this point. I think we're, we're on the home stretch here. Okay, get that lined up with the top nice and flush. Make sure it's centered. Grab that and give that a push so that right there in that little crevice it stays nice and flat up against the structure and finish this off here at the bottom. Spread that glue out. There we go. And bring it down. Get that nice and centered. There we go. Beautiful. Yep. Looks good. A couple more, and I'll be ready to rock and roll here with the next section. Okay, there we go. I think I want to go there next. Okay, again, using my using my fingers here to make sure that these two sections are nice and flush at the same height. And I think that looks that looks good. Give that a few presses. Give that a push. And go back to the bottom here. There we go. And bring that down. And there we go. Okay. One more to go. Let's see how that's starting to, starting to look. Okay. Now, I think what we're going to do is we're going to put her head in place. We're going to connect it to the base. This is the last one here. Before we do anything with the nose because I don't want to, the nose kind of protrudes out. I don't want to bend or break her nose. And I think there's plenty of room. Well, let me see here. Maybe not. Yeah, it's kind of tight up there. So we may actually have to put her nose in next. We'll see here. I think that probably would be a good idea. There we go. And we'll close this up. Last panel going in going on, I should say. Spread that glue out. And there we go. Get that nice and centered. Yeah, it looks good. There we go. Okay. I'd say that looks good. There we go. Okay. All right. <clears throat> well, that's ready to go. You know, what we could do though is put her eyes 
eyebrows and mouth in place. How about we do that before we get to the nose? Kind of leaving the <clears throat> leaving the stuff that I feel less uh, the least confident with towards the end. Uh, wait a second. Oh, there it goes like that. So that's how the mouth is going to go on. And if you if it so if it's easier for you, maybe just do one side at a time so that you don't get overwhelmed with trying to hold both sides down. And I need to spread that out so it doesn't come shooting out onto my, my green paper. Okay, so you'll see that there are some markers here. So get that in place first. Hold that with a couple fingers and then, okay, so I need to go like that. Hold that down in place. So you kind of cracked a little bit there, that's okay. All right, so fold that over. And I think that bottom part needs a little extra glue too. It's not, it's not really holding very well. So I'm gonna peel this back a bit and add some extra glue there. And then just line that up with the other little markers there. And just press that into place. And just kind of spread my fingers out in as many directions as I can to hold down as many sections as I can, just to make sure that all this all sits nice and flush. And that looks pretty darn good, actually. All right, so our witch is starting to come together now. Remember, we put the, um, put the eyes together. Now, what you're gonna wanna do, because, well, when we put this together, it was flat. I wanna take this, and especially in this area where you have the three layers on top of each other, just kinda start folding it and bending it so that you can make it round. You see how it's kinda curved? It's not flat. It's gonna go on a lot easier if you do that instead of trying to take a flat piece of paper, especially one that has three layers if we were just dealing with one layer, it'd be okay. But that section there that has three layers on it, you definitely wanna kind of fold that a little bit and give it a little natural bend so it's round. And then we can get these eyes together. Now we do have little markers for where the eyes go. And you gotta kinda of wanna follow that and make sure that it fits into the little markers there. You don't want it pointing this way because then she's gonna look kinda of cross-eyed or, or whatnot. So it's gonna go like that. Okay, and take a look from the side here, and that looks great. So let's get our glue on this first eye. And try to get that glue out to the edges here. Again, make sure you use the little guides here to help you get it nice and in the right spot. And just use two or three fingers to kind of hold all these sections down while it sets so that it sets nice and flat. That looks really cool. Okay, look at that. She's really coming together now. I can feel it. Okay. And I'll grab this one here. Again, take a look at the little guides there. Make sure you get them in the right spot. And even though we have the guides, let's take a visual look at her eyeballs and make sure that everything looks nice and symmetrical. So if you need to give it a little bit of a nudge to the left or to the right, feel free to do that. And that's what I had to do a little bit, and that's fine. It's just part of the part of the process. Okay, and just kind of keep holding that. Make sure that it's got a good hold all around before you release it. And that looks great. Okay, all right, so let's get our nose. And the nose is made up of two sections, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna build the structure of the nose first, okay? And that's this piece, a piece that has way more little score marks and tabs on it. And you'll see here that we have a long tab here. So get your glue on that. Now this is gonna be covered up with a top layer. So if you kinda 
get a little crazy with this, it's okay, but you do wanna make sure that you get everything lined up correctly as far as these tabs go. So just grab that piece and uh, place it onto that tab that I put glue on. Okay, and I'm gonna go over here on this side, move that out of the way for a second, and get glue on this long skinny tab all the way down. Just kinda hit that with my finger. Pop this piece right in place, like that. There we go. Okay, now you'll see that this piece is gonna bend in a little bit. And let me bend this out of the way so you can see this better. You've got a tab here. And let me see, let me make sure I'm doing this right. Yep, okay, let's get some glue on this tab here. And we're gonna bring this down and connect it to this section here. So just make sure you get that nice and lined up as accurately as you can. <clears throat> and then these little tabs here, these are what we're actually gonna use to connect this to the inside of the actual head. Okay, so go ahead and do that. Get some more glue on that last tab there and get that nice and lined up, give it a press, and there we go. That looks good. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these tabs and we're gonna feed them through this little slit. Okay, so the top one's gonna go through that slit, that one there, stick that in there. Okay, and you can see how that is going to work. And you wanna, you wanna force that in, well, I mean, don't, don't shove it in where you break things, but you wanna get that in as far as you can, like so, okay? And then we're gonna have to work from the inside. You can see those four tabs there. We're just gonna put a little dot of glue on the inside of the tabs. You don't need a ton, just one little dot actually should do. And I'm gonna put my finger on the top tab on this side. I'm gonna make sure that right here, this is the tab that I'm grabbing right here. You can feel it, there it is. And I'm pressing that up against the inside of, of the head. I just need to hold it for a second. I will show you what I just did from the inside. It's kind of hard right now because well, I need to reapply my glue actually. I didn't get enough glue on there. So you know what, maybe just do one at a time. Oh, you know what I did? I put the glue on the wrong side, that's why. Okay, so you can see the glue there. It's on that side. You wanna push it up, push the tab up. It's gonna go up here, not down there. So let me grab that again. Again, just make sure that this part of the nose, this the part right after that score mark where that tab is, is all nice and flush up against the head. And I'll show you here in a second what that looks like on the inside. Okay, so I don't have to point to it with my pencil. Tab is right here. Let me see if we can show it from this side. That's better. Yep, there it is right there. Here, you know what, I'm gonna put a little Put a little green dot on it or a blue dot on it so you can see where the tab is. I'll just kind of draw the outline of where that tab is so you can see it better. So you can see that's the outline of the tab, and that's kind of where it's that's kind of where I put it. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing on the next tab, the top tab there. So that one, same shaped tab, just the one on the other side of the nose throw a little bit of glue right on that tab. And again, we're gonna push that up against the inside of the witch's head. But we wanna make sure that this piece, I'm looking at it from the outside because I wanna make sure it's nice and flush there. And I'm gonna press and hold that in place until it fully sets, okay? The other two tabs at this point, since we got the, this is pretty much locked in, it's not going anywhere, but we're gonna add that for 
just to be sure. Okay, and here, let me just draw the outline. It's kind of a big outline. I went a little bit large on the outline, but you can see that's where I pushed, I pushed it down that way on top on the inside of this section here. Okay, so now we're gonna put some glue on the remaining tabs here. You can see there's two of them in there. And again, we'll put glue just right there. Hopefully you can see that, you see that little bit of glue. And then I'm gonna take this and literally just push it up against the inside. Okay, and then I'm gonna look at it from this side because I wanna make sure that, again, the nose is nice and flush with the actual face. I'll press that down, okay. So that's nice and locked in. And that just leaves one more tab there, you can see it. I'm, take, I'm really taking my time with the nose here because I, 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 I feel like this is gonna be, um, it's not hard, I just want you to fully understand it so you don't get lost or have questions. And then I'm just gonna take it and push it up against the inside of the head. And there we go, beautiful. That turned out nice. Okay, so that's all glued in place. Okay, so now that we have that all in place, um, what we're gonna try to accomplish here is we're gonna try to give this part of the nose a bit of a round feel. So I'm gonna take my dowel and pop, put the dowel in just up to this crease here. And I'm gonna try to kind of train this paper and make it round so that it's not so flat. Okay, so again, the bridge of the nose here, trying to kind of curve it a little bit, make it round. Uh, I'm not as much concerned about this part here. And also, a little nostril here, you can kind of flare that out just to kind of add a little bit of dimension to the nose. Okay, so what we're gonna do, is we're gonna start off by gluing this down. <clears throat> and what we wanna do is well, when we line this up, the little fold here, we wanna line that up with the fold. So actually what we should do is start with the, the tip of the nose here. Get your glue on the very tip. Do that part first. Okay. And get that lined up with the fold there. It's a little tough to see. And then of course, as long as you get the very tip of the nose lined up with the tip of the base structure here, I think you, you pretty much are in good shape. Okay, so just focus on that right now. First objective, there we go, that looks good. Okay, and now you can take, and we're gonna glue this part down so, actually, you know what we should do? Let's glue this part down first. Well, that's not gonna work. We're gonna do this. Get the bridge of the nose in place here. So, go ahead and get your glue on this section here, and then work some extra glue up towards the top here, that little round area. Get that out to the very edge, okay? And then go ahead and pop it into place. And we want it to hug. especially up here, I wanted to kind of hug that, and then this is just gonna go down like that. Okay, so I'm just kind of pinching it right there in the center so that that grabs like that. Okay, just like that. Okay, now we can take this, these little two side sections here, and don't need to put glue all the way down to the bottom of the little nostril there, but you do wanna put glue all the way down this section here. And focus on getting this side here aligned first and foremost. Don't worry too much about the nostril. We're not overly concerned about that matching up because that's gonna kinda of dangle anyway. Okay, so get that as lined up as you can like so, there we go. And you can see that the nostril just kind of falls into place, like so. Okay, so that's kind of what we're looking for, all right? And we'll do the same thing on the other side. We've got this little gap here. I'm gonna throw a little bit of 
glue on a scrap piece of paper. And I've got a little gap here where it's not sitting completely flat. I'll throw a little extra glue in there and press that down so it looks nice and nice and flush right there. And just continue to hold. If that happens to you, just paint a little glue in there and continue to hold it until it's fully set. Okay. There we go. I think that ought to hold it. I'm just going to be patient with it for just a few more seconds. There we go. Okay, so I can flare this out. And again, don't worry too much about putting glue on that little nostril, but definitely get that glue out on this section and bring that down and get that nice and butted up and aligned with the top part of the nose as accurately as you can. And there we go. That part looks good and it looks pretty good. And I may just kind of hit that with a little bit of ink that you can see what that's starting to look like. There we go. Okay, nose looks good. And that is it. So that wasn't so bad. Yeah, I think she looks great. Okay. All right, next section here, we're gonna take her head and get her attached to the base. Now remember from the previous step, when we do that, we wanna make sure that she lines up with this front part here that we did uh, earlier, this little pattern. It's part of her, her blouse or whatnot. Okay, so we're gonna put this upside down and I'm gonna put glue on these two tabs here it doesn't have to be perfect. We don't have to worry about spreading it out to the edge or anything like that. Just make sure that this pattern here lines up with the center of her face. Pull those tabs in. We're going to glue them to the inside of this section here. And make sure that it's nice and centered. And just kind of, you can kind of push this upward a little bit up into as close as you can get. To that neck part and that looks good so we got those two in now i'm going to shift over to the back let me get this in here i'm going to go to this back tab here because we want to make sure that we get this nice and centered so put glue on well actually this would be yeah it's close enough it's good enough just do that one there and pop that in up against the inside of this section here and take a look back here make sure everything looks nice and centered and press and hold that tab in place okay there we go and then we can go over to one of these tabs just throw some glue on that guy and fold that in again making sure that we got it pressed up against that that score line as far as you can, the base. So kind of pushing the base inward up against that little score mark there that is attached to the tab, just so that this is as flush as it could possibly be. All right, we'll move on over to the side opposite of the side that we just glued down. Bring that tab in. You can see now it's starting to fight a little bit, but not really. Okay, just get that tab glued down. Go. And a couple more tabs here. Well, let's go over here real quick. We'll do this one. Push that up against the inside and give that a push so that it's nice and flush. And, you know, honestly, I think a lot of the stuff's going to be hidden when we put that collar on, but still, I don't know what's going to happen towards the end if we goof up at this point. Okay, I'm going to go here. Push that tab in, get that nice and lined up. Press and hold. And the last one. Just watch that nose. Don't go crushing that nose. Oops, oh boy. And just press and hold that tab in place. There we go. Okay, so. That's all good. Now let's take a look. Let's see what we're going to do next.
All right, so we're gonna put the bottom on this now. Now that we got all this in place, I don't think we really need to uh, worry too much about getting our hands in there. So let's anchor this to one of the front sections because we always, I tend to always do my best work on the first tab that I put down. So we're gonna anchor it to this one here and then we'll glue the rest of it down here in a second. And we're gonna do this twice. We got two layers for the base. Okay, so get that nice and centered. Okay, hopefully it grabbed, it did. And press that down. Okay, you can see how that's nice and anchored now. And we can go ahead and apply our glue to the remaining tabs. And we'll go ahead and close this guy up. I'm gonna go a little bit thicker here on this glue because I've got a lot of tabs to work with. I don't want it to dry out. And then I'm gonna do my little line along the edge and paint that out. Definitely works on your fine motor skills, crafting that is, or gluing I should say. I guess all of it. This is good, it keeps your brain healthy. Okay, painting that glue out to the edges, kind of tacking it up a little bit so that it all goes down, hopefully in one fell swoop. Putting these tabs up a little bit so as I push this down, it grabs more of that surface area. Focus on getting this part centered first, the side opposite of the side that is anchored, and then work your way around the perimeter. Press down right up to the edge there. Run your finger along the very edge where the two sections meet. Make sure that's all looking good. Okay. There we go, and you can actually grab a dowel. Kind of, is that even is that even reaching it? Yeah, it is. I think. Yeah, barely. It's okay. Take a look at your work and kind of push down in little areas where maybe it's not sitting completely flat. But I actually did a rocking job on that. It came out perfect. Okay, so let's throw another extra layer on this just to thicken it up a little bit because uh, it's got a lot of. Holding on to a lot of stuff here, and we want to kind of double it up a little bit. And then I'm going to do a line around the perimeter, paint that out so that the second little layer that we put on here isn't just floating in space and has a nice, nice, tight seam. Okay, there we go. And pop that right on, get it nice and centered. Oops. Oh no. Creased it. No, I dented it. It's not creased though. Thank goodness. There we go. And just hold that in place. Go around the perimeter. Make sure it's all making good contact. There we go. Okay. So that's that. What you're going to notice with the hair elements here is that some of them have a curve have a curve to them. Obviously, the longest hair is gonna be up in front. So find the longest strands. And we'll, we'll put those next to each other. Those are probably the longest. Let's see here. Yeah, let's say those are the two longest. One's gonna, so you see how it's kind of curving. And ultimately, what we're doing is they're gonna be curving towards the center or the, the center of her face. We're gonna, we're gonna be putting them right about there. And we want them, I want all these pieces that, well, the first two at least, to kind of curve inward towards the center of her face. So let's just line these up and take a look at, uh, also, we've got a little skinny one here. It's a little solo guy. It's gonna go right there. And then we've got a little bit of a thicker one. It's gonna go right there. Okay, so the first two panels, so this panel and this panel, they're each gonna receive, um, well, two layers. Actually, all of the panels are gonna receive two layers, but the, f the first two here, this one and this one, they're gonna receive the longest ones. 
okay? And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna put this one down first and then this one's gonna go over it. Okay, so we got two layers, like a layered thing. So find the longest ones and then the second longest ones. And these are gonna go like this, okay? And then next, we're gonna go, and actually the rest of these are almost identical. So what we wanna do is kind of group these. So we, we understand this one now. I'm gonna put this off to the side for a second. Let's take the rest of these and kind of group them together or just lay them out so we can kind of get an idea of their heights, okay? And just see how much they vary, if at all. Okay, let me see if you can get all this on here, yep. And I'm using my, using my little uh, craft mat here to help me gauge the sizes. Yeah, and you can still see that, so that's good. Move that out of the way. And let's put this one here. Okay, so use your little craft mat or put a ruler out. And you can see here that there's, well, they're all pretty much the same. With the exception of, well, this one is uh, a little bit longer and these are probably the shortest. So for the row that comes after the longest row, find, find two of the longest ones that you can. Okay, so it's gonna be this one, and I'm gonna go with this one. Okay, so pick a side, doesn't really matter which side. I'm gonna put this one on the left, and this one on the right and then grab a grab some shorter pieces to go along with it. So this one's a little bit shorter. I'm gonna put that one there. This one's a little bit shorter. I'm gonna put that one there. And again, this is gonna go on that side of the longest side. And this is gonna go on the right side of the longest side on the right. And that just leaves two more. Is that right? One, two, yeah, that's right. So then what we wanna do is just group We'll find the two longest ones, separate them. Looks like these are probably the two longest ones and then we'll just grab these and pair them with that. Okay, and then these are gonna go on opposite sides. So that's, I guess, pretty straightforward. All right, anyway, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna get her hair glued down and we don't need to put glue on the whole thing. I'm not gonna train her hair just yet. We are going to train all this and bring it to life, but not just yet. What we wanna do is, this is the longest strand of hair. Okay, just put the glue up towards the top. You don't need to go anywhere beyond where the cuts are for the individual strands of hair. Okay, and we're gonna glue that right up to the seam there. Okay, just like that. There we go just like that. Then grab the next longest piece and glue that right on top of this one. Okay, so we've got the longest strand in place. This is the second longest strand with the curve going in. And we're gonna get that, we're gonna glue that right on top of this strand of hair or this group of hair that we just glued into place. I'm gonna get that all the way up there as far as the glue goes, and just pop that right on top. Now what we can do, once we have this in place, is grab a dowel. I'd go a quarter inch, three quarter inch, and just kind of go crazy. And train this hair, curl it. Okay, so then we're gonna go out Probably do the longer ones out and then the thinner ones maybe in just to change it up a little bit. So I'm gonna grab this, I'm gonna grab this one here and train it in. And maybe even out here, train it out a little bit so it kind of curves in um, well multiple ways. And then maybe this one is really crazy. And it's got a major curl. Like that. We'll go here, curl that one, and just curl the bottom of this one here. Curl that back so it kind of sits up against the head here. Then it curls out. OK, 
Okay, so just play with it and train it however you want. It's your hair. Well, it's the witch's hair, but you know what I mean. I'm gonna curl this down. I'm gonna curl that out. Curl this one down all the way. Yeah, you can see what the end result is starting to look like here. Okay. It's gonna look like. It's gonna look really cool once it's all nice and full. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Not to divert here, but I gotta put her eyebrows on. It's, uh, she reminded me of. Uh, for those of you that watch *Impractical Jokers*, reminded me of when Murr shaved his eyebrows. That was that was a strange one. Okay, so get her eyebrow in place, put the other one in place. She was kind of freaking me out. That was kind of scary. There we go. Okay, and there are little markers there to help you with the placement of the eyebrow so that you get everything looking nice and symmetrical. Okay, there we go. Okay, so <clears throat> that was the right side. Now we're gonna go, and actually, I did mention that we have a single thin strand here. And you know what, if it is easier for you to do your training before you actually put it on, that's fine too. I just thought that it might be easier, but whatever works. And that's gonna go right here, just a single little strand there. So just put glue on, just kinda like, I don't know, the first, uh, First little inch or so. And you know what? I need to bring I need to bring this one, these two down. Like that. There we go. That looks better. <clears throat> okay. So let's move on over to the other side. And again, we're gonna take the longer section and put that down first, and then the thinner section. And I'm actually just gonna train this now. And I'm gonna go down on this one and then just take the tip and curl it back. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the third strand, like that, and then this guy here. This, these two are gonna come out. This one is gonna go in and then out. And then these two, I'm gonna start those in, and I'm gonna finish the last one out. So it's totally random. There's no right or wrong. When you're done, if you wanna go grab uh, your curling iron and really give her some nice locks. I'm kidding, you don't wanna do that. You'll probably start your project on fire and we don't wanna do that, we've come too far. Okay, so we're gonna glue that right there. Just kinda of nudge that up to the score mark from this top layer here, this section here. There we go. And we'll do the next section here. And this one's gonna go down this one's gonna come up and then down. And this one's gonna go down and then up. And this one's gonna curl. That's a wicked curl. Wicked curl. And there we go. It's kind of fun actually. And get some glue just on that top section just before the individual, whoa, individual strands start to uh, start to be cut there on that purple sheet. Okay, and just line that up with the previous layer and press that down. And you can see how her hair is starting to look. Before we go around and get the rest of the hair on, we're gonna put the collar on at this point. And I think the best way to do this, we we'll probably just do this in, in one fell swoop. We don't need to worry about being perfect with glue here. We can actually go kind of thick with the glue here. Let's put glue on all of these sections except for the front section with the pattern. Okay. And we'll go here. And we'll go here. Okay. 
and literally just gonna take this, you can fold these sections up and just wrap it around uh, like that. Bring it all the way in and bring this section down. Get this hair out of the way. And nice and flush all the way up to as far as it can go up here. That looks good back there. Like that, like so. And bring that down and just make sure that down here, the little corners are matching up. And then we can peel back this section here Uh, pretty much up towards the top there and just kind of pop that into place as well. So these two smaller sections that don't completely go out should pretty much meet in the center here as they as they did. Okay, and that looks good. Just continue to hold that for a moment while it sets. Okay, so you can see how that goes around nicely. And everything looks like it lined up perfectly. Okay, so the collar's in place and we can continue on with our hair here. Uh, let's not forget this single little strand that we need to put into place. So just throw a little bit of glue, about maybe, you know, it's about a half an inch or so from the top. And we're gonna glue that strand right next to this guy here. And with that one, let's curl this one out. Kind of like this. A little awkward. There we go. Bring that down. There we go. Okay. All right. So moving on, we've got a few more sections here of hair. And again, we're going to put the longer hair down first and then the shorter. So let's do a little bit of training here. Um, for these back sections, it may be a good idea to kind of, you can train them down a little bit, but you wanna mostly train these out because you got the collar in place there and we don't want that, I don't wanna obstruct the collar. Well, look, actually the collar is probably gonna obstruct the paper. Okay, so I just need to pop that in like so. And then, actually it might work better if we curl them in. Either way, they'll get in there and we can always just kind of push them into place. So don't worry too much about that. We can always kind of uh, fluff things up and shape things later on once everything is glued down. I'm not overly concerned about this right now. And press that piece of hair. And she can have some hair sticking over her collar. It all doesn't have to be tucked in. So there's no right or wrong here. I'm just trying to give her a full head of hair. Okay, and you can see here, eventually, you just tuck those in. One of them could be sticking out. Maybe this thinner one is going like that. And like that. Nothing wrong with that. And if you want, maybe you just tuck that one down. Just to kind of even it out a little bit. Okay. And let's get these trained now. These are a little bit shorter, so should have less problems with it sticking in there. And I'm just kind of going alternating directions here. Get that glue all the way out to the top. And press that into place. There we go. Nice full head of hair for our witch. Okay, let's move on to this side. Grab the next section here. And again, we're gonna go with the longer one first. Get those curls trained. Back and forth, in and out. Towards you, away from you, however you wanna do it. Now, if you want to really give her a curl, just wrap it around the dowel. Like that. And let's get our glue up at the top here. 
spread that out, thin it out a little bit, <clears throat> and get that in place. There we go. And we can tuck that in, leave it hanging out, whatever you want to do. It's up to you. Okay, and then grab the next layer. It's a little bit shorter than the previous layer, and it's going to go right on top of this one. There we go. All right. And it just leaves the back of the head here. And a couple more layers. Again, starting off with the piece that's a little bit longer. These are pretty much the same. So I wouldn't obsess over which one to put back there. I think it's fine either way. And I'm just gonna layer them, two layers. I think this is almost the last step here, guys. Put the hat on and see what she looks like. And I'll just kind of go over some of the additional touches that we'll be adding to this, just to kind of jazz it up even more. It's not much. Got a little, um, a little bit of well, it's actually rope. It's not ribbon that we're gonna put around her, around her neck. It's almost like a little necklace. If you want to add a real necklace, you can. Okay, so that's gonna go right on top, literally nice and flush with the other top portion. Okay. And let me see here. Last section here. Give the strands a little curl. Get that glued down. There we go. Pop that in place. Oh, and you know what? There's one other thing that I forgot. I'm looking at all this purple. It just occurred to me. We have a little wart that we're going to put on her nose. That is not a scrap that you cut out. It's actually a functional piece. And we'll show you where that goes. There's actually some markers on the nose for that. So you can't miss it. Okay. Last one. And pop that right on top. All right. Cool beans. Let's give her her hat. Whoops. Oh yeah, look at that baby. That looks awesome. Okay, so just a couple little tidbits here. Uh, as I mentioned, we have a little wart for her nose. And that wart actually does have a little fold. There's the fold. And that goes right on one side of her nose. It kind of works its way over the fold. The thicker part is going to go up towards the top, and you can see a little marker there for her little purple wart. Wouldn't be complete without a warty nose. Okay, that looks great. Yeah, look at that. Uh, and again, aside from that, um, take a look at the final photo, and you can see how, well, here's the rope that I'm going to use. I'm just going to tie some rope around this little area here, give her a little bow. And uh, what else? Oh, and also the little um, pipe cleaners here. We're going to train these so that they kind of, you know, aren't just flat. And we want these little elements, these little stars and moons kind of dancing above the little finial up on top, which in this case is just a styrofoam ball. So play with this so that things start to look kind of kind of cool and magical. You can have one star kind of maybe going up and then down. You know, however you want to dress this up, it's totally up to you. Just kind of make it as random as you can get it, really. That looks kind of cool. But again, as I mentioned, I'm thrilled with the final outcome. And as you can see here, 
they are pretty much the same scale. We can take a look at the other camera. Now, for those of you watching, this, this is part of a different bundle, but I just want to show you how cute they look together. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Like I said, take a look at the final photo on the website so that you can see where we may have added um, some additional bling or whatnot. And um, yeah, hope you enjoyed the process. I know this one is a little bit of a lengthy one, but I mean, hey, you know, as I've said before many times, um, sometimes, uh, you know, the projects that take a little extra time are always the ones that really stand out. And this is going to be a winner. I know people are going to love this, actually. I'm, uh, I'm very happy with the outcome, and I can't wait to see yours. But anyway, if you enjoyed hanging out with me, please head on over to our YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button, and while you're there, hit the little bell so that you get notifications um, so that you know exactly when we release any of our new videos, whether it be for paid or free products, as well as our software tutorials. And um, if you make this or anything from our new Halloween bundle, I'd love to see it, and so would the almost 23,000 other dreamers that inspire us. So head over to your Facebook and do a search for Dreaming Tree Group up at the top. Or if you want to type in this address below, right into your address bar, it'll take you right there. Uh, but happy hauntings, happy Halloween, and I look forward to crafting with you again.